Hey, what's up everybody? This is Chad Cravens with Open Source Systems. Today we're going to continue the installation of virtual machines using VirtualBox, the open source virtualization software. In Screencast 001, I talked a little bit about what VirtualBox is and step-by-step uh, -step how to install it. So today what we're going to do is we're going to take the next step, which is actually installing a virtual machine and running that virtual machine inside of VirtualBox. The virtual machine we're going to install in this clip is CentOS, which is a Linux distribution based on Red Hat. The, what we need to do is first open up a web browser. I'm using Chrome here. Go to google.com and just search for CentOS. You'll notice that the CentOS project website comes up. Click that website. And it is loading and it looks like they have a brand new look on CentOS. They've uh, really done a great job. You can read here, CentOS has actually joined forces with Red Hat recently, so that's a new development. I would assume, since this is my first visit to this website, you click on Get CentOS, and you see this little Download Now button. We'll download that. We have a different list of uh, available mirrors here to download the latest CentOS distribution, which looks like it is 6.5. And we're going to go ahead and just select one of this FT, uh, HTTP mirrors. This one looks like finalasp.com. That looks okay to me. We'll go ahead and download. That'll download the DVD ISO uh, version of it. It's about 4.2 gigs, so it's pretty large. This download is going to take a long time, but don't worry, we're not going to sit here and make you wait through all of that. But what I am going to do is just briefly discuss what ISO is and what we're going to be doing with this file that we're downloading. So essentially an ISO image is, a, is an image of, of uh, it's a binary image of an operating system that you use to essentially kick off a build on a brand new computer. So with VirtualBox, what you do is you essentially generate uh, virtual computers and with these computers you have to install an operating system. An operating system is what allows you to to work with the computer, to run programs and open uh, programs and software like Excel or, or Word or a, a browser, whatever you want to run on a computer, it's all based on the operating system. So most people are pretty familiar with the concepts of operating systems running on Windows or uh, the Mac OS X operating system. Uh, not so many people are probably familiar with Linux, but it's also very, very common, uh, particularly with server-based applications, uh, applications that run on the internet that provide you services like email or uh, web services. So we are actually going to download and install the, a, a Linux distribution and, and put it inside of this virtual box uh, machine. So you can see that our download here is chugging away, uh, but we're going to go ahead and, uh, since it is going to take two hours to download, we're going to go ahead and cut to the next scene, which is actually uh, taking that image and installing it into VirtualBox. Okay, great. It looks like we now have our ISO image downloaded here. You notice CentOS 6.5. Uh, if I select it, it's about four and a half gigabytes. So it's a pretty good size file. One thing I forgot to mention before, over here on the left, you'll notice this file is called x86 underscore 64. That means that this ISO image is essentially meant for 64-bit processors. Uh, so usually computers come in two sizes, two flavors, 32-bit or 64. All of your modern computers are going to be 64-bit. Uh, some of your older uh, systems are going to be 32. For this Mac, you notice I can see what kind of processor I'm running by just selecting about this Mac. And looking over here, Intel Core i7, I know that that's a 64-bit processor. So I'm going to go ahead and choose that ISO. But for those with 32-bit processors, choose the i386 version. And uh, that, that should work for you just fine. So we're going to go ahead and open up the download section here, just so that we know where our ISO is located that we downloaded. And now we're going to go to the VirtualBox Manager here. This is what your fresh install of VirtualBox should look like. Click New, and we are going to create a new virtual machine called CentOS 6.5. You notice as we type that, it was nice enough to select Linux and Red Hat based on the name that we gave it, CentOS. And as I stated before, CentOS is based on Red Hat. But rather than choosing Red Hat, I need to make sure and choose Red Hat 64-bit. Red Hat 
Uh, otherwise, I'll, I'll have an error when I try to boot. For memory size, I usually choose between a fourth and a half of what my host memory is. You notice here it, it detected that I have 16 gigabytes of memory here on my, uh, my Macintosh computer, which is my host computer. For this one uh, demonstration, I'm going to just go ahead and choose uh, four gigs of memory. We're going to also create a virtual hard drive for this virtual machine. Essentially what this is is a file that represents a hard drive that this virtual computer is going to use. So we're going to create that in the next step. For this one, I, I usually get rid of all the, the spaces and, and funky characters. So we'll just call this CentOS 6.5. The location, um, I have a, a place that I call dev, uh, VM, and uh, CentOS 6.5 folder within VM. You can put this wherever is best for you. Make sure and change the file name here to CentOS 6.5. Click Save. For files for hard drive size or file size, I usually choose 100 gigabytes. Now this is dynamically allocated while the VM is running. So it doesn't create an initial file of 100 gigabytes. This is actually uh, dynamically uh, enlarged to support the stuff that I install in my virtual machine. And for your hard drive file type, you can just stick with VDI, the VirtualBox disk image. I won't go into what the differences are exactly right now. Uh, that'll be for later. A later screencast. So here you'll notice that we have the path to my um, to my hard drive or my virtual hard drive for my virtual machine. I have the size of this hard drive, 100 gigabytes. So this is like having a 100 gig hard drive for this machine. And I'm telling you to dynamically allocate. That way it doesn't uh, it doesn't try to create all 100 gigabytes at, at at once. So go ahead and create that. You notice that that's it. That's all it took to go ahead and and create that virtual machine. So next what we need to do is we need to tell this new virtual machine where to find this ISO image so that it knows where to boot. Uh, let me just go ahead and show you real quick what happens if we start this virtual machine. I'll go ahead and click the start button. The virtual machine is starting now. It may take just a few minutes to do that. Okay, so this is like the BIOS. And you notice the first thing that our virtual BIOS told us is that no bootable medium has been found and the system was halted. So essentially what we have is we have a brand new computer uh, here and it's telling us, I don't know what you want me to do because you haven't told me where to go. We're going gonna, we're gonna to go ahead and close that and power off the machine. Then what we're going to do is we're going to select this machine, go to settings. Then we're going to go to storage and we're going to select this. Now, what this is, is this is the virtual CD, CD-ROM drive of my virtual machine. Right now I'm telling it to, to point to my actual DVD um, device on my Mac. But what we're going to do is we're just going to change that temporarily to say, instead of pointing to the one on my Mac, let's go ahead and choose the ISO image that I downloaded. So essentially what this is, is this is like me taking that file that I downloaded and inserting it as a DVD into my virtual machine. We're going to go ahead and say OK. Now, again, we're going to select, make sure our virtual machine is selected. 64-bit is what we chose here. We're going to click Start. We're going to let the virtual machine start up. Boom. It now started up from that ISO. We're going to sell it to Install. And it's going to load up the Linux image and do its thing. Now, for those of you that aren't too familiar with Linux, you'll notice that a lot of of interesting characters are coming by and this may look a little intimidating for you. Don't worry about it. Most of the time this is okay. If there is a system error, it'll usually tell you. Uh, we're going to go ahead and skip the media test. And now we enter the graphical installer. So this is a CentOS, CentOS 6 graphical installer. Um, you notice here that the mouse has two modes. Uh, right now, I cannot actually mouse out of my new virtual machine. My mouse stays in my virtual machine. But that's easy to fix. On a Mac, you can just hit the left command button, and that will bring your mouse back over here. So you notice I have two, uh, two pointers. I have one, which is my Mac pointer, and this one, which is my virtual machine pointer. But if I click back inside my virtual machine, click you notice that now it gives the uh, 
it gives us control to my virtual machine mouse pointer. So we're going to use my virtual machine mouse pointer to click next. Uh, we speak English. We're going to just say basic storage devices. We don't have any specialized devices here. So really what this is, is this is installing a CentOS server uh, on my virtual machine as if this was a server in a server rack. Uh, we're going to say, uh, yes, go ahead and discard any data since this is a brand new hard drive, a virtual hard drive that we created. Uh, host name can go ahead and stay localhost. That's fine for now. Okay, we get to choose our time zone. I, I am on the East Coast in the United States. For password, we get to choose a password now. Now this is going to be your root system password. Uh, it is advisable as a security standpoint that you actually never log into root. But nevertheless, we do still create a root password. Okay, we're just going to say use all space here. So click this first, uh, this first option. Uh, I usually don't encrypt the file system, especially for these VMs. Uh, it's really not necessary. So you you can check these if you'd like, but I just I don't. Um, okay, we'll click next. We'll say write changes to disk. And what it does is it goes ahead, it goes ahead and and creates all the volume mappings and uh, creates the file system XD4 by default. Uh, and what what we're going to do is we're just going to say for this one a desktop version of CentOS is fine that'll install uh, really kind of the the primary packages for a desktop based application uh, you can also run linux as what's called a headless linux server which means that it is without any guis it is completely command line based uh, i i run primarily headless linux servers but for this demonstration we're going to go ahead and do the desktop click next and it will go ahead and determine what packages it needs and begin the install process. So we'll go ahead and fast forward through this install process, but uh, just so that you can see what this process looks like. Okay, excellent. It looks like it uh, completes our installation. Now all that we need to do is go ahead and click reboot. Now remember, this won't reboot your computer. This is going to reboot your virtual machine. You do have a virtual computer. So click the reboot button, and it will start to reboot your brand new Linux system. So congratulations. Now you'll notice that our boot screen now it looks a little bit different. We have these bars here at the bottom, which are typical for CentOS to indicate that the system is booting up properly. So we'll let CentOS complete its, its booting process. And we'll go ahead and open up and I will uh, demonstrate a login and show how we now have a successful uh, installation of a virtual machine using our open source product. It sets the resolution appropriately. It looks like there's a few more steps for finalizing your installation. Go ahead and click yes for the licensing agreement, if you agree. Now before I had mentioned, uh, it's never a good idea to log in as root, but we created a password for root anyways. This is our opportunity for creating a user account so I'll go ahead and fill in my credentials here. Like that. Uh, click. For use network login, this is for, for more advanced features like, uh, like it says Kerberos or, or, uh, or uh, directory services. Oop, just gotta make sure passwords match. like I'm having a rough time with passwords today. Okay, we set the current date, which today is uh, January 23rd, 2014. And we'll finish. Um, sure.
Okay, again, you'll notice uh, I'm currently trying to move my mouse around, but the mouse on my screen is not moving. That is because my mouse is still in the virtual machine. So like I said before on Macintosh, you go ahead and left, you click the left command key, and that will allow you to start moving your mouse again. Go ahead and close these. For the next videos, we're gonna do a few things. I am going to demonstrate how to install the guest editions on our new virtual machine. What this will allow us to do is actually prevent us from having to hit that command key when we're trying to move our mouse between our host machine, which is out here, and our virtual machine, which is in here. Uh, that's a very, very useful feature as constantly hitting the command key can be a pain sometimes. Uh, it also does a few things as well as uh, I can readjust the size of the screen and it will automatically adjust the resolution of my virtual machine in real time. And that's also tremendous. VirtualBox has really done a, an amazing job at creating this product. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and log in with my account here. And it's going to go ahead and initiate my account. So congratulations, you now have a full Linux installation, um, a virtual Linux installation installed on your computer. Uh, again, this is a, a machine that you can really do whatever you want with, uh, experiment with. You can install web servers um, and database servers for all your testing. Uh, and, and in future screencasts, we're going to go over more of the advanced features for setting up uh, cybersecurity labs on your laptop using virtual machines, things like that. But uh, I appreciate you taking the time to watch this, and uh, good luck with your install. Thank you. Thank you.